Hey guys, episode 14, Jiu-Jitsu Rolling Analysis, I think that it is. Uh, today we have Eddie's uh, match, one of his matches at uh, the tournament we had past weekend, this past weekend. Um, side note, I know some people were talking about the uh, video quality and the distance. It's the best I can do with these tournaments, guys. Um, it's unfortunate. I think it's kind of the nature of the beast. I can't really get closer um, this tournament did a really good job about not letting people get close to the mats, which is super annoying if you've ever competed in a tournament. Um, so props to them. Downside is we don't get the best, um, views, but with that being said, these are very clear views, which is something that's usually not the case at these tournaments. So you can clearly see the matches. You can clearly see the fights. Um, we don't get all the, like the cool 360 move around views that normally come, but it is what it is. Um, if you don't like these ones so much, I apologize. But if you do like it, it's important to me that you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. It would mean a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Also, really important side note. Um, I'd like to point out the size of these muscles right here. Look at this guy. Those biceps and shoulders, quite large. It's impressive. I don't know who that is, but just keep it up. All right, let's get into the match. All right, blue belt division. We got a six minute round. So, grip fighting. Um, I mean, I don't really need to back up, I guess, but don't, don't let someone have these grips. You gotta, you gotta fight these grips off. So they're in like a neutral stance right now. They're head to head. What you want to be do, Eddie, what do you want to be doing, Eddie, is breaking these grips and getting your head in the pocket, um, like right here. That's where you want to be posting your forehead. I'll move out of the way to Mike. You want to get your head in there and use that pulling on their collar on the other side, or in this case in the gi, on their, um, uh, I guess the collar still, still the, uh, the, the grips. Um, you'd have a collar tie, no gi. And uh, keeping that pressure up. I've lost my mouse. Where's my mouse? Okay, there it is. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So, grip fighting. Right, he pulls guard. You got to get that. You got to clear that grip. Yeah, see, he, he's able to control you with that. This guy's freaking out. I know it's hard. <laughs> this he's got he's already breathing hard and it's been 36 seconds. OK, um, it's important in competition to calm yourself down. OK, these guys have done nothing yet except for just death grip each other's gi. So just take a deep breath, realize that it's okay. It's just rolling. You've done this a million times. Relax yourself and, and do what you're supposed to do. Break those grips. Yeah, see, if you clear that grip. There you go. Now you're, okay, so he pulls guard again. You got to break that grip. Now you can't. It's it's almost not even worth commenting on what you should be doing because that grip's so important. And I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just like if, if someone controls your collar, they're controlling your neck, they control your whole body. So it's, I mean, it's like you can't really fight like that. That should be like ground zero is like clearing grips. Like, st like step zero. It's it's You can't let somebody control you like that. Good. Let's see some grip fighting. You want to get that collar sleeve up. So you just go two on one, punch it off. Okay. So two on one, you're going to push it away as you move your body back. It's going to make any of these takedowns. So he's pulled guard when he he's shown the tendency to pull guard a couple times now, or th I guess this is the third time. Um, are you touching his foot? All, all you have to do is points is if they touch your, if you touch their foot, 
Okay, you go for the takedown. And then I'm just going to frame by frame this. There we go. Okay. So literally, if you just take this hand off of his collar right now and just tap his foot, like if the foot's coming in, you just tap it, you get two points. It's silly, but, the, you know, it's to discourage guard pulling. Clear the grip. Yeah, he's just setting you up here. So now he's going to be able to load you heavy. Eddie, your base is so good. The only reason this is close right now because you're not breaking that grip. Like, I, I don't... This is probably going to be a quick one. I'm just going to let this play through. Like, there's not... This guy isn't doing anything. Oh. Okay, what happened there? All right. So he baits, baits, sprawl. You got your hips. So you want to get, you want to jam. This shouldn't, this shouldn't work. He's too far away. You take your forearm. And you just jam it across his face, across face, and throw your legs back, and you get him right in the turtle. Does he have your back leg? Does he collect both? Yeah. Okay. All right. So from here, you put him in De La Hiva. He puts you into a leg drag. So don't. Did you voluntarily do that or did he force you? Yeah, don't don't play this guard here. This is leg drag position. You need to retract this and this this uh this is like the dominant leg in De La Eva. That should be hooked in right here or placed against the knee and pushing away this direction. Okay. Now does he put it? Wait, hold on, I have a zoom feature. Yeah, it looks like you pushed it away. Okay, so from here, kick the leg out and then back around. Ooh, Eddie making me zoom. First time using the zoom feature. This is a good leg drag pass. Um, oh, you can't knee bar. So you get turtled. Turn, turn, turn. Good. Nice. Very nice. I I don't get points. I don't know why you just got an advantage or he got an advantage. Okay, so you roll. So I would swing this leg over and put yourself into half guard on top. Swing this leg over here. Let's see what happens. You slide up. Yeah, if this leg slap if you throw this leg over fight for an underhook or even just put in a whizzer yeah I would I wouldn't go up so high initially because you don't have control of his head so it's not hard for him to create frames which is what he's doing kind of shove you off and get his legs in between you and his upper body and get him back to guard and then he uses it to stand up here guillotine here you have a whizzer so what you could look to do as you stand up is take, it would be your right leg and just tap his left leg as you go up and dump him in this direction. We'll see if we can frame by frame. So as you come up, you get an underhook instead of an overhook. So this dives underneath, take this leg. Look, as he lifts that foot, you swipe it out from under him and drive him in a big, Big turn with your upper body and take him over. You let him get away with that. Eddie, I know your cardio is good. You should be pushing the pace against this guy. He's breathing heavy.
Beautiful. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay, he moved. I hope. All right. He's competing. They get the right away. I wonder what this reflection is. What is this? Okay, sorry. Distracted. He threw it. Pulls guard again. You got to break these grips. Same same story. The grips are broken, so I would be settling back down and looking to break the guard open. Oh, but good. You got your feet. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's the problem when you stand up in someone's guard and your posture is broken. Right? So he's holding this arm. Oh, no, he's not. He gets a hold of that arm. Yeah. So from right here, what you could do is internally rotate your knee that's getting attacked. So just shove it right into his hip. And with this hand, you'd come up and create a wedge with your elbow right here along his knee and pop the guard open. Um, he might slip down into K guard, but you should be able to turn your knee enough that it'll make it quite uncomfortable for him. And then you can use that to retract your leg and get your base back in split stance. I like that you keep fighting. Good, yeah, because it's not a sweep. Be hey, good job. It's not a sweep. Advantage, yes, but not a sweep unless they come up on top and they show control. Okay, do it again. Let's see. You're getting up. I would, yep, I would stand up. Good. That's literally what I was going to say. Uh, he's going to try the same sleep again. Nice sit on that. Okay. Yeah, see, he had to, I would have kept pressure on that. I would have, I would have sat hard on that arm and trapped it there, like butt to the, butt to your leg or butt to the floor. And then looking to strip this grip and then fighting them two on one. It's going to be very difficult for him. You can use that to pop open the, the guard watch for triangles but then you could eventually look for a double under or a single under or a um not a single under over under sorry i don't know why i did that i don't know why it's called a double under and then not a single under it's a double under and then an over under either way um you can look for that hey you did a really good job bud okay Again, uh, be careful with your posture broken. Yeah, the mermaid sweep. Oh, let's go. Oh, no. So this guy clearly plays this game. Like, he's got he's got all of your options beat, you know? He's got all of your options dialed in. So that's the tough... That's the cool thing about competing, but the tough thing about competing is, like, I don't know too many people that play this specific game at our gym, but I've seen it before because I've played a bunch. What he's looking... He's doing all these closed guard sweeps and he's baiting you with different situations, right? So in for instance in this situation He's getting you up your legs are traveling close together your knees are traveling close together And then because he has you down because he has your posture broken when you go when he goes to open your guard And he has you going backwards already. You see how your weight is is shifted backwards right now. This is really smart it's hard for you to lift your feet. So as he opens his guard, he beats you to the punch and collapses your knees in. And then he literally just dumps you to a side. He could, he could have gone either way. You did a good job of punching through. But as you do that, you need to turn back into him and look to get an underhook so he can't come up on top of you. Or from right here... This arm should be coming over hard and getting a wizard and then fighting from the dogfight position. Which is what you try to do, but just a little late. He gets the sweep. Turtle, you get back right back to the guard. Nice. We're going to work on that tonight. Uh, what happened? He got on your back. Nice try. Let's see. It was a good match, man. It was close.
So when you're in turtle, you can't let your head drift away from your hands like that. You got to protect your neck, especially in the gi, because then get all the gi chokes. I don't know what choke he got you exactly with. Um, but nice try, dude. Um, honestly, man, I think the fight's very different all the way back here. It's kind of weird to think about, like, it's kind of weird to think about you lost by a choke. Like, it's probably what you're thinking when you go into the gym, you know, yesterday or today or whatever. Um, I record these the day before usually, so I'm, when I'm saying today, I'm refer referencing our uh, no-gi class tonight, 6 o'clock, 6 to 7. If you're interested, email the academy. Um, but you're probably thinking, like, oh, I got to shore up my turtle defense. When in reality, the issue was all the way back at the beginning of the match with the grip fighting. Like, I have no doubt that you could take this guy down. I have no doubt that you could pass this guy's guard. I Like, you were showing it with him controlling your collar. Like, that's ridiculously hard to do. And it's also an easy thing to fix. Whoever controls the grips controls the fight. You got to think of it that way. It's that important. It's It's like ground zero, step zero first thing that you have to do is control the grip fight if you win the grip fight you're going to win the match like they can't do anything if you're dominating the grips so um i wouldn't say either of you dominated the grips i think i say i would say both of you neglected grips and you decided to have a jujitsu match while holding each other's necks or holding keeping control of each other's necks and you guys kind of like agreed to it without actually agreeing to it. Like ni neither of you tried to fight any grips. I guarantee you, one of you fights grips, that person's gonna win the match. So I would, yes, like I would look at Turtle and we're gonna work on that tonight for some other reasons, like just some defensive stuff, but but focus on uh, grip fighting. You win those grip fights, like like you literally like take a, take a couple weeks, it doesn't take that long. But just like make it a point, like I, I'm not gonna let, especially in the gi class, I'm not gonna let anybody Grab a hold of me. And no gi, it's just as important too. Don't let them get bicep ties, collar ties, um, uh, front head locks, you know, any any kind of body lock, any kind of controlling grip or control around your body. Fight those things. Don't let them win that. They shouldn't be winning that for free. Like it should be, you know, they should be getting exhausted. They should be destroying their grips. Okay. Is this guy's hand, is this guy's hands taped up? No, not yet. Oh, look, his hand's taped up, right? So he probably he probably could have just been ripping these grips off and he would have been having a hard time. Okay. All right. Good job, Eddie. Um, I, uh, Eddie, Eddie, for those of you who don't know, Eddie is a beast. Um, he uh, regularly gives me a very hard time when we roll, so I have no doubt. And I'm the same weight as, as Eddie and these guys, um, as you can see by these. Massive biceps right here. All right. I'll see you tonight. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Goodbye.